Hey everyone, uh, I want to talk about dream control and this is probably going to be uh, a two-part series. One, I'm going to explain how I came to have this knowledge and two, I want to give you everything that I know so that you can begin working on this. Um, the Illuminati are masters of dream control and we actually live in a byproduct of their dreams and of their astral work and we are not benefiting. We are asleep in their world and they do everything they can to keep us unaware and keep us in control and not realizing our greatest potentials and dream control is one of those tools that once you have a number of lucid dreams you will begin to realize how much more powerful and divine you are these are the things the Illuminati and the reptilian agenda does not want you to realize they want you to think you are highly limited that you are fragile, that the world is to be feared, and that you need to pay them money to live on the planet you were born and protect you from all the made-up boogeymen that they perpetuate and they develop just to set loose upon an unsuspecting public. And 99% of it is completely false. But they have you living in a reality that they've tricked you into thinking is real and unchangeable. So, I had the experience that very few people will ever have. Um, but after this experience, I realized I didn't need to have it, but I'm glad that I did. I lived with a Chiricahua medicine woman for about a year. And six months of that year was spent in a Dreamwalker initiation that her own grandpa put her through. Because I am not Chiricahua or Native American, it had to be changed to fit my uh, ancestral line. And so we developed a Indo-European style dream initiation that I'm sure probably existed in some form or fashion and it was actually very easy to put together so I feel as though we were tapping into some initiation process that my ancestors did. Uh, all the characters that were used in this initiation were replaced um, mostly from Shakespearean plays uh, who he pulled from Indo-European myth as well as Greek myth and things fit very smoothly. Um, there was no drug recreational uh, usage in this process save one where um, there was drinking of absinthe, um, but that was on a totally different level and doesn't need to be used. For six months, um, I was isolated um, in a small wooden shack out way out in the wilderness. I will not disclose where. A friend of mine also was uh, stationed in a small wooden shack about 15 miles apart. And this Chiricahua medicine woman lived somewhere in the area I still don't know where and, and never did find out. We spent this time in almost complete and total isolation. Um, I stayed in my shack, he stayed in his. There was a circle of stone that surrounded our, 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 our shacks that we were not to leave. She would bring us food um, sometime, I'm guessing early mornings. I never saw her. I would just wake up and there would be food available. Uh, it was simple proteins and water. So yes, there was a detox element involved. Um, and I lived inside a ceremony. Uh, and I lived in the in-between. So after a couple weeks, uh, I couldn't tell you what day it was. Um, and time lost all meaning. And I, there was no cell phone, there was no news from the outside world, there was nothing. So it was just basically me, the practices that she gave us, and every seven days we would, she would come and get us. We would be led to a sweat lodge, we would have a sweat, we would go through a ceremony, we would share our dreams, and we would return back to our, our respective homes. Um, during this time, uh, my dreaming got extremely intense, and my ability to have lucid dreams happened almost at will. Not only that, I began to have frequent and um, uh, sometimes even purposeful uh, out-of-body experiences. Um, amazing, amazing experiences. As my time went on here, uh, 
using uh, individual sigils that we created, uh, I was able to meet this friend of mine in the dream time. We were able to have a number of experiences that were all written down and when we met in the sweat lodge and we handed each other our dream journals and I read his experience and he read mine and we realized it was the same experience, the doors blew open and, and I could, you know, we could never go back. Um, so we had actually met each other in the dream time, actually gone through the same experience. Uh, wrote down each other's words, wrote down each other's actions, and we really we, we realized that consciousness um, is so much more than what we are being told it is. Um, towards the end of of my experiences here, um, I woke up to hear rumblings of thunder, um, crashings and explosions. Um, I I looked outside to see a huge uh, a herd of wild horses running to uh, my shack and the only words that I could remember is do not leave the circles of stone and um, I, I stayed and as they approached they dissipated into mist later um, nightly UFO visits uh, they would hover above where I was staying um, and at some point, they actually, uh, visitors did come into my shack. Um, whether or not these were projections, if they were more in the dream world, or if these were actual physical encounters, I can't say for certain. But I met a large number of different races, um, and we do have allies out there. Uh, we really do. Um, I met what people call, and uh, um, I, what, what people call, um, Oh, I'm sorry, man. This, 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 just even talking about this, so much floods to the surface, and I have to keep it uh, censored. Um, those uh, I, I met races that was from Andromeda. I met races that were called the Nords. Um, I met Pleiadian. I met a group that comes from the Pleiades. Um, I even met some Greys uh, who weren't as hostile as usual, but um, for whatever reason the experiences and the awareness that I was I was gaining in this process um, uh, opened me up to meeting them so I don't know if they were there and they're just undetectable to our to our normal consciousness and when we go over and we cross and live in that type of, of ceremonial awareness that they become visible to us my my thinking is that they're probably always always around us it just we're not always able to perceive them because they are interdimensional and can exist in a dimension that our physical senses don't always pick up so I wonder if this experience didn't wake me up enough to see them and uh, even as a, as, as a younger kid I, I had experiences with UFOs and these sort of things anyways um, so this this is what I did um, I lived six months as completely just dreaming um, like, like I said the days flowed into each other and I, at some point I couldn't tell where the dream started and the waking consciousness consciousness began and the real mystery was even waking consciousness is a type of dream we we are in a type of trance and our level of awareness is kept at a certain at at a certain limit and because of the very evil nature of the Illuminati and the powers that they are in league with they purposely purposely do everything they can to even limit that scope of awareness right down to basic survival and down to a slave mentality that we need masters to take care of us that we need masters to protect us and none of that is true uh, we have the ability to to become aware of our dreaming selves and build amazing, amazing things for ourselves and allow it to manifest into this physical realm. Um, so that's where I gained all this knowledge that I have, and I'm going to share this with you in the next video. Um, I really, really um, feel that for anyone... Uh, who wants to be part of the Grand Order of Draco Slayers that that you pay very close attention to the next video um, and you uh, begin to apply this 
daily and um, I would love to hear a lot of your experiences. So the Dreamwalker experience that I went through in a Indo-European flavor um, was uh, a hallmark moment in my life and uh, something I gl I'm glad I got to share with you. Be right back.